Hi. I think we're live. Yeah, we are definitely live. I see people coming into the room. Um, we're also live on LinkedIn and YouTube. Um, so please say hello. Uh, let us know if you can hear us. I know there's a delay, so I'm always quite patient before I start panicking <laughs> if people are actually if people are actually here or not. So how many seconds do we have before you start to panic? I think it's four seconds. So there's a four Great. second delay. Probably there's even more on LinkedIn and YouTube. But I can see people are hearing us and saying hello. Hello, everyone. Um, right. Let's get started, I think. Mm -hmm. So hello, everyone. Um, thank you for tuning into this live Career Foundry event. I'm Jakob. Um, I'm back at Career Foundry. Um, very, very excited uh, to, to be here today with Maureen. Uh, Maureen is a product designer at Miro. And that's a very cool company. So if you don't know Miro, definitely check it out. Uh, and she's also a Career Foundry UX design graduate. Uh, Maureen is also an amazing content creator uh, who is all about sharing design knowledge. So Maureen, welcome again. Great to have you with us today. Yeah, thank you. Also excited to have this session today. I think this is a very, a question that a lot of people ask. Yeah, so. and it, it's been for a while now. Is it too late to become a UX designer? I'm exactly. curious as well. Um, if you've never heard of Career Foundry, uh, we are an online bootcamp that helps people become UX, UI, and product designers. Uh, we take you from a complete beginner to ready to hire designer uh, and help you get that first job in the industry. If you're curious about any of our programs, you can book a call with one of our program advisors. Um, they will be, they will cover everything you need to know, basically. Um, Right, logistics. We are recording the session, uh, so you'll be able to review it later today, later tomorrow, um, and the whole presentation. And what else? Oh, yeah. If you have any questions, uh, just post them in the Q&A panel or in the chat on LinkedIn or on YouTube. Uh, we'll get to them later. And I will really encourage you to stay till the end, because we'll be sharing a special Maureen link in the chat that will give you 20% of our full UX design program. So if you're thinking about studying with us and want to get 20% off, stay till the end. Um, and with that said, let's dive into it. Uh, I'm going to fade into the background for a bit, but we'll be back later. Um, so yeah, enjoy. Take it away, Maureen. Thank you, Jakob. Um, I'm in a bit of a different environment today. I'm actually doing this webinar from the Miro office. So if you hear a bit of background noise, it's because people are packing up and going home, um, but that should not be an issue. So I'm just gonna go very quickly over this as Jacob already introduced me. I'm a Career Foundry alumni. Now I work as a product designer at Miro and I also do a bunch of stuff online. So I have a newsletter that you can subscribe to where I talk about design and career. And you can also find me on Instagram and on LinkedIn, where I share a lot of different content uh, on becoming a UX designer. And today we're gonna answer a question that I've heard many times that have gotten into my DMs on Instagram many times, namely, is it too late to become a UX designer? And um, we'll go through a bunch of different things today but what I hope you will take from this webinar are some practical tips on what you can do if you are looking to become a UX designer right now. Because I think one of the main reasons why people ask this question, is it too late to become a UX designer, is because we've seen in the past two years, year and a half, that the strategies that were very successful for people previously are not that successful anymore because the job market has changed, the economic situation has changed, and so a lot of people are facing struggles to land a job. So today we are going to unpack all of these different things. I will tell a lot about my own experience, and um, this is also just one view on this question. 
please ask as many questions as you want. Um, I will try to leave a bit more time today to go through the Q&As because usually you folks have a lot of great questions. So anyway, let's jump right in it. So the first thing I want to talk about is this uh, narrative that you can land a job in three months with no prior experience and you can get these really fancy jobs, well-paying UX jobs. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into that narrative. So um, when you do a search on Google, when you do a search on YouTube, um, you will find that a lot of videos are focused around landing a job in UX in a very short time frame and with very little experience. I've added an example of here. Um, here. I've blended out the names of these creators because this really is not meant as slander to these creators. This is more meant as an example of the videos that you will find. Um, and when I did a little bit of a deep dive into this kind of content, I found that oftentimes these experiences are based on a completely different situation that, than that we're in right now. So people that managed to land a job with very little experience or no experience at all, they often found that job pre-pandemic when the economical situation was different, the job market looked different. They oftentimes may not have experience in UX directly, but they came from adjacent fields like graphic design or marketing. They um, managed to land a job quickly because they invested a lot of time in networking or they landed a job really quickly because they used every opportunity to get work experience. And this is something we'll talk about a little bit later as well, that work experience can happen in many different ways. And one of those ways, the most obvious one, is landing a job. But you can get experience in UX design even when you don't have a job as in UX. So um, the reason I start with this is because I find that this narrative of UX design is a profession that you can get into in just a matter of months and you don't need any experience. That narrative is very persistent and it leads to people having wrong expectations and then later down the line being disappointed. And so while this narrative is true for some people and you can definitely land a job with no experience, it's something that is becoming more and more unlikely. So that means that you will need to change your strategy and your expectations when you want to become a UX designer in 2024. So when I look into like what is true or what is a myth of finding a job within months with no prior experience, I would say that while it is possible, it is very unlikely, especially in this current job market. And what that means is that you have to adjust your expectations when you are now starting your UX journey or you're thinking about it, that the, the, the timeline looks more like 12 months. That's a very, like, and I would say that's even a pretty short timeline when you think about going from being a complete novice at something to landing the job and all the career change that comes with that. So to put that in perspective, I started my UX journey in 2017. So that's seven years ago. I landed my job in 2018. And even then, it took me almost 10 months to really go through the online course, find a job, finish my portfolio. And when I started the job, I was still very much an inexperienced designer. There were still a lot of things that I didn't know that I was overwhelmed by. And there is absolutely no reason to hurry when you want to change careers because the more time you invest in really perfecting your craft, the easier it will be when you actually find your job. So a career switch really takes patience, it takes commitment, and it's hard to take shortcuts, especially in this time we're in right now. So um, how do people land jobs in UX? I think that in the past years, 
we've seen many different ways to become a UX designer. And one of the ways is to do an online course or to do a bootcamp. But as I said, that is just one of the ways. There are many different ways you, people land into the UX field. So um, the second question after people asked me, is it too late to become a UX designer? And I told them no. The second question they asked me is, do you need a bootcamp? To which my short answer would also be no. Because especially now, you can do everything on your own for free if you wanted to. There is so much content on UX design available that you could build your curriculum completely based on your own skills and your own expertise and interests. You can find everything online. Um, so one of the reasons why a bootcamp might not be the right fit for you is that bootcamps can be very costly, not just in the actual money that it costs for the course, but also the time investment it asks from you, the commitment it asks from you. So that is something that's not fitting for everyone. And what you should also imagine is that when you're doing a course or a bootcamp, you're really on someone else's schedule. These bootcamps oftentimes have a certain pace, they have certain deadlines. Sometimes you even have to pay money on top if you don't finish the bootcamp within a certain time frame. So you need to be sure that you can commit that time that the bootcamp takes. And another reason, and I think this reason has becoming more apparent in the past years is that you're one of many in the past years we've definitely seen a boom in bootcamp alumni people that took a ux course or ux bootcamp many of them are now on the market they're all looking for the same very few entry-level jobs so you're having quite a lot of competition with the other alumni so you might think okay then what are the reasons to become a bootcamp or to, to um, enroll in a bootcamp? And I think the main reason, and that was also the reason why I decided at the time to enroll in an online course, is that a bootcamp offers structure, it offers convenience, and it offers a certain peace of mind because you don't have to figure things out on your own. And that for me was a really important reason because I knew that I could theoretically figure out what UX design is and what I need to learn and build my own curriculum. But that would take a lot of time. It takes a lot of discipline. And for some people that works really well because they crave that freedom, they know how to motivate themselves, they know how to build a curriculum. But for others, it's actually really nice to have a package where you have a set curriculum, where you have information that you know is written by professionals. And, and this was also very important for me, you have access to a mentor, to a tutor, and to a student community. So when I was looking into becoming a UX designer, well, first of all, that was a different time because there was not that much content available. There were not even that many boot camps available. So for me, I was really feeling like, okay, I, I, I want to become a UX designer, but actually I have no clue what a UX designer actually does and what UX design actually means. And so having that boot camp to take me by my hand and kind of lead me through this journey was really valuable for me. And I think if you're making this decision, if this is something that works for you or not, it's really good to think about what is your learning style. So how do you like to learn? Um, so when um, you do want to get into a boot camp, there are also many scholarships that you can look into. Um, I know that with um, the Women's History Month, there are special scholarships. So for me, the main reason was structure convenience, time saving. And I still think that that rings true even seven years later. So I talked a bit about identifying your learning experience. And this is something that I think a lot of people skip because either they don't think about it or they think it's not important. And what that does is that by the end of their journey or mid 
in, in the middle of their journey, they realize, oh, I actually should have thought about this a bit more before I committed to something. What is really important before you just enroll in a boot camp or before you decide to become self-thought or before you decide to go for a degree is to think about what is the best way for you to learn and what is the best way for you to learn that fits your budget and time. Are you someone that prefers theory? Are you someone that's more hands-on? Are you someone that can build a support system around themselves and enjoys building a network on their own and knows where to find design peers? Or are you someone that really likes to have that student community? What's your budget? You know, if you have very little money to spend, but you have a lot of time, then self-thought might be a more reasonable choice than enrolling in a boot camp. Again, if you ha don't have that much time, but you have some money to spend, you might think about taking an online course. So I've put some pointers on here that I asked myself before I made the decision to enroll in an online course. And I really thought about what would be my ideal learning experience. So for me, it was really important to have those people around me that were doing the same thing, to be studying with peers that we could motivate each other. It was really important for me to have a mentor and a tutor who could look at my work and give me feedback. And um, even though at the time I was not making a lot of money in my job that I was then in, and so it was quite a big of chunk of money to invest in a boot camp, especially when I think about I didn't even know what UX design was and I didn't even know if I would like it. So it was a bit of a gamble. But I thought that the online course would set me up for the most success because it would give me that structure. So if we look at this question, like, is it a truth or a myth that you need a bootcamp to get a job? Is it a guarantee to find a job? I would say this is definitely a myth because there are many designers that go either the university way or they are completely self-thought or like I said before they come from an adjacent field and they field and they can move laterally in a company so what is more important is to think about what is the way for me to structure my learning that fits me and that motivates me so there are many ways to become a UX designer and they're all valid. They all have their reasons for existence and they all work for certain people. Now, um, another thing is that a bootcamp is not necessarily a guarantee that you will find a job. It's a guarantee that you will have a foundation, that you will have some structured learning, but landing the job still is very dependent on you and the time that you invest in it and the motivation that you bring. And these job guarantees, they oftentimes also come with requirements. So I really recommend you read up on those and understand what that really means, having a job guarantee in an online course or in a boot camp. What are the expectations that come with that? Now, this is, a, this is gonna be maybe a bit of a controversial one. Um, is it the truth or myth that everyone can become a UX designer? Um, I think one of the reasons why we're struggling with so many entry-level designers that are looking for a job is because there is this very strong conviction that everyone can become a UX designer. As long as you have some money to invest in a bootcamp or as long as you have some time to invest in your learning, you can become a UX designer. And just because you can doesn't mean that you should. I think the big benefit of a profession like UX design is that there is no official degree or there is no official certificate. Like when you want to become a doctor, you have to do a certain studies, you have to officially become a doctor. With UX design, that's not the case. Anyone can call themselves a UX designer. You can wake up tomorrow and, des and decide that you're a designer from now on. And there is no one that can say that's not true. But that also means that it requires a bit more from yourself to do some inner searching and think about, is this a profession that really fits me? Um, because just like any other profession, 
UX design is one that fits some people really well and it fits other people not so well. And I think one of the things that the industry shoot themselves in the foot with really is this idea that um, you know, UX design is a job where you can get really rich in a short term, a short amount of time. And of course, that attracts a lot of people because who doesn't want to have financial security? But that also means that when money is your only motivation, you're going to have a really hard time down the line when you're competing against people that are way more passionate or that have a better fit towards design than you might have. Um, if you come to the conclusion that UX design is not the profession for you, that is also totally fine because there are many different roles within the UX field. You don't have to become a designer. You can become also a UX researcher or a UX writer or a content designer or someone that's more focused on strategy. So UX, the UX field is not just design. There are many different roles within that that might be a better fit for you. So um, I've written down some pointers that they're very generalizing, you know, just because I have some things standing here doesn't mean that if you feel like, oh, does that now mean I cannot become a designer? Of course, that is a decision that only you can make for yourself. But throughout the years, I've noticed that UX design is an especially good fit for people that really enjoy research and complex problems because the actual designing part, the actual building designs in a design tool is a very small part of my job as a designer. I spent way more time researching, doing presentations, stakeholder management, um, creating journey maps or user flows. So the actual creating a screen like you would see on Dribbble is something I well, sometimes I wouldn't do that for months and sometimes I do a little bit of it. So if you enjoy research and kind of like unraveling these complex problems, I think that is then it's really something that you would enjoy a lot. If you enjoy working in a team, if you enjoy having people around you, if you enjoy working together with people, presenting, if you're someone that really likes to convince others, I think UX design is a good fit for you because the reality of working as a designer in a company means that you will still need to do a lot of what we call evangelizing. That means there are a lot of people in companies that don't really know what UX designers do. They might question why you're there. They might think you're just a graphic designer or just, they might think you're a graphic designer. And so you will need to do a lot of work to explain the value of design to them and to explain to them how you can support their work. And so if you enjoy that, if you enjoy working together with people and presenting, I think it will be a, a good fit for you. And um, another reason why UX design might be a really good fit is if you're flexible, this job requires a lot of adaptability. You're constantly switching contexts. A lot of design work is a compromise it oftentimes is not completely what you envisioned and you need to bring that flexibility. Even if you feel like the work you've done represents the needs of the users the best, you're still working in oftentimes in the environment of a company. And so what the work you do should not only serve users, but also the business. So you need to bring that adaptability, be able to embrace those unknowns and feel comfortable in an environment where you have more questions than answers. Now, when is UX design maybe not the right fit? Maybe when you really love the visual part of design. So when you really enjoy spending a lot of time in Figma and trying to figure out how prototyping tools work or building UI screens, then UX design might maybe not be the right fit. Maybe it would be better to focus more on being a visual designer or a UI designer. If you prefer to work on your own, if you're someone that's like, I just want to sit behind my computer and do my thing, then you're going to find UX design quite a challenging profession because, like I said, you need to do a lot of convention, um, 
a lot of work convincing others. So if you're a bit of a, if you're someone that just likes to do things on their own tempo and like kind of focusing your own world, it's going to be a bit difficult. That's not to say that UX design is not for introverts. I would say that a lot of designers are introverts, but they find a way to manage their energy levels with doing this presentation work and doing this work convincing others. But it is something that requires you to, en to manage your energy levels. So that's something you should stay aware of. And if change stresses you out, if you like to have clarity on your tasks, if you like to know what, you, what is expected from you, then UX design might also be maybe a bit too chaotic for you. So these are just some pointers of to, to think about if you're um, thinking about becoming a UX designer, if it's something that works for you or not. So um, I would say, sure, like theoretically, everyone can become a UX designer, but I would really encourage you to think about what your motivations are to start in this profession, because just as any other profession, this one is that a profession that fits better for some, not so well for others. And if you want to break into the field right now, it takes more than just being motivated by money. You really need to know what you're committing yourself to because it's quite competitive and it requires a lot from you, especially the expectations from junior designers have become way higher in the past years than, for example, when I had my first job. So this false notion that everyone can become a UX designer, I believe, and this is my personal opinion, that it damages the industry, it sets false expectations, and that leads to people being disappointed down the line. It leads to an overheated market because there are a lot of people looking for a job, even when it might not be the right fit for them. And so I think it needs a bit more quality control. That's something that we cannot control ourselves. But what we can do is think about what do I hope to get as a UX designer? Is this the role that fits me? Or is there maybe another role within UX that fits me better? And it's also on you to do your research. And coming back to my point previously, think about how you want to structure your learning to make sure that you can um, yeah, com combine your motivations with a structured way of getting there. Okay, now coming to the question that we started with, which is, is it too late to become a UX designer? Now, if you've listened to what I've been telling in the past 10, 15 minutes, you might think, oh, it's too late. Why am I still here? Um, and spoiler alert, no, it's not too late to become a UX designer. If we're looking at the current job market, you might think that you might get the feeling that this is a profession that is way too late. But the reality is that what you see online are many designers that work at the big tech companies. What you don't see online are is the majority of designers that don't work at big tech companies, but that work in companies that you might have never heard of. And that doesn't mean that they're not good designers. Maybe that means that they're even better designers because they are too busy um, doing good work instead of being online. So the idea that you know UX design is a profession that happens in big tech hubs at big tech companies and you're earning a hundred dollar a hundred K dollars and up, that is a very limiting idea of what it's like to work in UX design. Um, because most of the designers, they work in boutique studios or in smaller companies and they have a great time. They learn a lot. And just because you're not working at a big um, a, a company as Facebook, as Google, doesn't mean that you're not a good UX designer or that you cannot find a job. So um, I want to debunk some I like persistent ideas that I've heard throughout the years. And the first one is that making 100K, I oftentimes heard people say like, can you make 100K as a designer? And I'm based in Europe, so I cannot speak for the US market, 
but making 100k in Europe as a junior is absolutely delusional. In fact, even as a senior, I'm not sure if that is very like, unless you work at a well known company that might be doable, but still then it's not uh, something that is the standard. To give you an example, the average salary of a senior designer in Amsterdam, what I've seen is like around a 60, maybe 70 K. So uh, definitely not a hundred K and definitely not for juniors. Um, another thing, like I just mentioned is you don't need to work at a famous company to be a good designer. Um, my first job was what it was at a small design studio and I have learned so much there. It was because it was a small design studio that I had a lot of opportunity to learn, to learn from my design colleagues. And um, just because a company has a big name does not necessarily mean that you will learn a lot there or that you will find the best designers there. Another thing is that not every UX designer earns a lot of money. You know, you also have UX designers that don't earn a lot of money. It's not necessarily like a get rich quick um, approach to become a UX designer. I keep on stressing this because I found that this is really persistent, that um, UX design is like a gateway to becoming filthy rich. And I'm still waiting for that point. So um, that is definitely a myth. And working at smaller companies might be more enjoyable and helpful, especially in your early career, because it gives you the opportunity to try out many different responsibilities, to try out different projects. Um, there might be way more attention for you in a smaller company than when you're just a cog in the wheel in a big corporate. So if you're looking for your first job at this jo current job market, I would recommend you give these smaller companies a chance too, and maybe apply for jobs that at first don't really sound that exciting or that cool because it's not a well-known name, because you might find that that's actually a place where you can really flourish. So like I said before, um, it's not too late to become a UX designer. Then why do people ask this question? Why do we believe that it's too late? That's because when I'm looking back at like the past seven years, I noticed that when I started my UX journey, um, I didn't know anyone that worked as a UX designer. I had a hard time finding people that worked as a UX designer. And so because there was not, there were not that many people working in this field, when I started looking for a job, it was really easy for me to land a job because the demand was way higher than the supply of designers. And that kind of, that trend kind of continued. And especially during 2020, I, I noticed a big boom of people that became UX designers that got interested in UX design. There were a lot of job opportunities. So it really felt like as designers, we were on top of the world and um, we, you know, you could not make, you, you could make, as much money as you wanted, you could work at the coolest companies and everyone was, at this, was riding this high of like, oh, everything is great. And then we entered 2023 and it all went like poof, down, not just in design, but in general, we faced a lot of layoffs in tech in the past two years. And so that might lead people to think that as UX designers right now, you don't stand a chance. But when we zoom out a little bit, and I've gotten this graph from Anand Group, you will see that the prediction is that the demand for UX designers will only go up in the next decennia. So what we are looking at is really just like a tiny micro moment where we have a little bit of a dip. But overall, when we zoom out, you will see that the demand of UX designers will continue to rise. And this is something that I can also attest to in my personal experience, I found that design is still a pretty young profession within companies, which has its own challenges. Like I just said, some people um, 
are don't even know what we do they don't even know what ux design is because it still is so new and so the more mature people uh, the more mature companies become the more demand they will get for ux designers because they will learn the value of design and so there will be more asked for design and you can also notice this at like big companies that invest in more spe specialized UX roles like UX researchers or UX writers. That means that they are starting to understand the value of design and they're starting to hire very specialized roles. And those are companies that are pretty much at the forefront when it comes to hiring designers because there are many, many companies that don't have UX designers and they don't even know what it is and they're, they still have to go through that growth. So um, the bad news is, yes, we currently are in a little dip when it comes to job opportunities. But when you zoom out, you will see that this demand will continue to rise. And I really like that's also what I see in my work environment with the people around me. So what does that mean for you? Because, you know, it's great to know that in 2040, we need more UX designers, but now it's 2024 and you need a job right now. And that is what I tried to um, get a bit of a clearer picture of in the previous things that I told you, that if you want to have this profession, you can look forward to a future with a lot of opportunities, but that means that now, you have to grind and you have to really commit to this. You have to be aware that this is something that is a marathon. This is not a sprint. This is not something where within three months you have your comfortable job and you can relax. You have to commit to a journey that might take longer than you think. And so you have to build systems in place that can help you manage that. What does that mean? If you're looking to become a UX designer right now, Make sure that you have the time, you have to have budget to dedicate to that. Make sure that you make a plan. How should that curriculum look like? What do you want to learn? How can you get extra experience? What kind of personal projects can you take up? Are there charities or the internships that you can do? And most importantly, how can you collect people around you that can support you and motivate you for the next 12 18 months that you're going through this career change because I can promise you one thing at some point regardless of how passionate you feel about design at some point in your career change there will come a moment that you feel unmotivated that you're starting to question why you started this I also had this moment um, where when I just started my online course I was super motivated everything was new, everything was interesting. And I spent a lot of time, uh, also in my free time, learning about UX. And then at some point, this kind of like this blocker came where I thought, oh, what, what am I actually doing? I don't even know if I actually like this. So far, it's all been theory. What if I spent all of this, all of these months for nothing? And that's when it's really important that you have people around you that can relate to that. And that you can find that in a student community when you are doing a course, or you can find that online when you're uh, a self-thought designer. It's really important to build that network around you. And you cannot start early enough with that to start building those people around you that can help you get through these moments. So what are my three tips for today's market? To recap what I just said, first of all, it's important to manage your expectations. It's important that you understand that it's normal to spend months on a career switch. When you think about it, we also don't expect doctors to become working doctors within three months. I don't think anyone would feel comfortable get being getting a surgery from a doctor that started three months ago. And so the same is for UX, even though we're not operating people, we still are designing experiences that have very real consequences in the real world. And you cannot expect to go from a zero to a hundred within just a couple of months. Because you're managing your expectations and because you realize 
that it will take more time. That means that you can also focus more on your learning. And one mistake that I see a lot of people make is that they think, okay, I want to become a UX designer. That means I need to get a portfolio, ASAP, checklist, and I can get a job. But what these people don't realize is that a portfolio is not a goal on its own. It's an outcome and it's the outcome of all of your learning. So instead of trying to finish your portfolio and fill it with case studies as soon as possible, focus on really learning the craft of UX. What does that mean? Really focus on understanding information architecture, really focus on understanding user flows, do a lot of side projects. You know, I know that boot camps offer their own case studies. Think about how you can give it your own twist, pick up some extra projects, play around with things and um, join hackathons. There are many opportunities where you can practice your craft. But I think this learning part is oftentimes overlooked and that leads to people having portfolios that are just not convincing because any experienced hiring manager can see right away that you have no clue what a persona is. You just made it because your bootcamp told you to. So really focus on understanding the things that you're learning. Give yourself time for this. There is no reason to rush. And that leads me to my last point, focus on quality. And especially when you're applying to jobs, it's very tempting to apply at any job you can find on LinkedIn. And I've been in this myself. I've also made this mistake where out of desperation, I was just applying to anything that I could get my hands on. And what that does is that you, when you focus on quantity, you cannot focus on quality. You're just out there trying to reuse cover letters, trying to reuse portfolio pieces, trying to reach out to as many companies as you can. And so that lacks focus and intention. Whereas when you take more time to really find the roles that you feel like that fits me, that fits my experience, that fits my interests, my expertise, and you really research these companies, you read up on what, the, what it says about their company um, blog, like a lot of companies explain who they are, what their vision is, what their mission is, what they're trying to achieve, what their challenges are. If you spend that time up front, that means that you won't be able to apply to 100 jobs, but also you won't need to apply to 100 jobs because the few jobs you do apply to are very, very well thought out. And Believe me, hiring managers can tell this if you're just like shotgun approach sending applications or if you are actually putting time in your application. One of the questions, this is a little bit of a tangent, but since we're talking about this, one of the questions I get here um, is that people ask, does that mean I need to make a portfolio for each for each separate application or for yeah, each separate job application. And in an ideal world, you would make sure that your portfolio fits the job application you're sending. If you want to apply at a healthcare company, ideally you would have case studies that reflect the healthcare industry or that reflect some of the things that these companies are looking for. But of course, in reality, no one has time to create 15 different portfolios. So what you can do instead is, again, look at what you have now. See if there are opportunities to make these case studies fit you better, make them more personal. To give you a very concrete example, when I was doing the Career Foundry course, we were asked to create an expert app. And... Um, there were a certain examples given, but I was living in Germany at the time. I was an expat. I noticed a lot of different problems when you live as an expat in Germany. And so I decided to make that case study focus on my own experiences. And it was this case study that landed me a job in the end because it was close to me. I understood the problem space and I was feeling very passionate about it. 
So instead of uh, thinking, oh, I have to create 15 different portfolios, start from yourself. Start, start to think about what is it that interests you? Find jobs that kind of fall within that field. And one of the things I can recommend, and what I have done myself as well, is don't overthink your portfolio design, so to say. That doesn't mean that you have to have an ugly portfolio. But for example, I think that Notion is a great way to build a portfolio. And it's an even greater way to build different portfolios because you can reuse case studies, you can reassemble the story in your portfolio. And so when I was applying to jobs, what I would do is I would create my portfolio in Notion and for every job that I applied to, I would make a slightly different portfolio in Notion. I might change the headlines. I might change the order of the case studies. I might change some of the storytelling in the case studies to fit the application better. So what you want to do is find a system that is flexible and that allows you to um, apply for these few different jobs without without having to build a portfolio all the way from the ground up, because I can totally understand that you don't have the time for that. <laughs> no one has the time for that. So is it too late to become a UX designer? Is that a truth or a myth? It's, it's somewhere in between. It is too late to become a UX designer using the strategies from pre-pandemic. If you look at people's journeys that became a UX designer before the pandemic and you follow their strategies, you will find that it's going to be really hard to land a job because you're following a strategy that no longer works. But it doesn't mean that it is too late to become a UX designer. You can still become a UX designer if you're willing to put in the work, if you do your research and if you adjust your strategy to the current job market, following the things I just said. So it's too late for all strategies. It's too late for this quick fix thinking for this, I'm gonna get rich in a couple of months thinking. It's, um, to be honest, too late for half-hearted attempts. You need to be really sure that you want this before you start to avoid being disillusioned. And because of this, it is actually exactly the right time for people who truly want this, who fit, whose profile fits the UX designer role, who are willing to go up and beyond. If you are someone that is really sure you want this, you will find that it's actually not at all too late to become a UX designer because in a time like this, where there are so many people looking for a job, it's the ones with potential and talent and true motivation that stand out and that will have an actually easier time finding a, a job because they stand out of the average. So is it then time to panic? Not really, because you might think with all of these changing factors, you know, why even bother to become a UX designer? And I hope that with what I've just told you, it has become a bit clearer why this is actually a good time to still focus on this um, career if you're looking at the long term. If you are able to um, look past the short term and you have a plan in place for how the next 12 months are going to look, how the next 18 months are going to look, you will find that it's way easier to also handle this kind of job market. It needs a bit of resilience. So if you did your research, if you know what you're starting on, if you like to take initiative, um, to say it in a very toxic way, if you are a self-starter, as startups say, um, that will actually come to benefit right now. If you are in it for the long game, if you know what you're getting yourself into and you are preparing for it, if you have a plan, if you're motivated by the work, not by the money, and, and this is an important point, if you can find ways to leverage your previous work experience, you will find that you can withstand these challenges. It 
is about building up that resilience and preparing yourself for this market because that's just the reality of now we cannot change the job market but we can change how we react to it um to um focus a little bit more on that point of leveraging your previous work experience so i'm going to assume that most people that are in this webinar are people that already have some work experience in another field and what you might think if you want to start as a ux designer is that you kind of have to put that previous work experience aside because you're going to do something completely different now. And that is not true. You will actually find that a lot of the things that you have experience in now can be of big benefit if you become a UX designer. So to give an example of myself, I studied art history, which has nothing to do with design. Then I worked in marketing and I did not have a clue what marketing exactly was. But there are still things that even in my arts history degree, I learned that now are of really big benefit. For example, knowing how to do academic research helps me how to do user research because it helps me how to formulate questions. I know where to find the answers. I know how to dig deeper into things. So if you are a career switcher, Take some time to take stock of all the things you've already learned, all the things you already know, all the experience you already have, and look at how you can make that into a superpower rather than something that you need to forget about or that you need to put in a box and put away because you're going to become a designer now. Like There are many designers that previously worked as a sociologist or as a psychologist or as a marketeer or what have you. And that background is actually what makes them really good designers. So um, if we recap and we look at how we even got here, we see that the balance on the UX market or in the UX field, it's a little bit out of balance. So on the one hand, we have many juniors entering the job market at once. We have the economic dip. We have false promises that are made that make you think that you can become a UX designer in just a matter of months. You have this narrative that you can become really rich. And that sets a lot of false expectations that leads to a lot of people entering the market with different expectations. Um, and on the other hand, you have the prospect of a better economical time. You have support and guidance that you need to seek out for. You have designers that meet a certain quality bar. And what is happening right now is that we kind of need to recalibrate. We have too many people with the wrong reasons on the market, so to say. And so we need to make sure that the people that come on the market with the right reasons can kind of balance that out. And so how I look at this situation right now with the current job market is I really see it as a time of recalibration, or as a time of um, setting realistic expectations, making sure that those that are in it for the right reasons get their chances. And that kind of like, I, yeah, I have no better way to say this. It sounds a bit harsh, but like kind of weeding out the people that are in it for the wrong reasons. And that is absolutely not meant in a bad way because sometimes you might start on something and you realize, wow, this is really not for me. Like when I, got a marketing job and I realized, wow, that was really not for me. So I had to kind of move into a different direction that was more like me. So I think we're now like resetting that balance. And um, that's why I also think that the situation we're in right now is more temporary. And once that balance is there, we will see more job opportunities coming again. So what can you do as the final recap? Um, really keep this slogan in mind. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is not true. Really applies to um, the ideas that exist around UX design. 
make a plan for the next 12 months, plan your time, plan your budget, plan your support, find ways to really practice your skills, take time to practice your skills. This will set you apart from all the others. Use your creativity and become active. A lot of people say, well, you know, there are no jobs in UX, so I cannot get experience. As a UX designer, you're also a problem solver, and there are many opportunities to get experience, but it requires a bit of creativity from your side as well, and it requires a bit of initiative from your side as well. If you're going to sit back and wait for someone to offer you an entry-level job, it's going to be hard, and you're probably going to wait for a long time. But if you're willing to look beyond that, and if you're willing to look for internships, charity projects, personal projects, if you're willing to give the case studies that you get at your boot camp an, your own twist, your own interpretation, if you're willing to just put a bit more time in than average, you will find that that can already make a really big impact, a really big difference. Okay. Um, I see that we have 20 minutes left, so I will stop talking at this point and I will give the stage to everyone that has questions. And we have quite a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maureen, uh, for this super real, real talk. Um, that's very, very inspiring. Um, so without further ado, um, question number one, um, lots of people asking about AI and other emerging trends, uh, you see in the field of UX that could impact newcomers in 2024 and beyond. What's your, what's your opinion about that? Yeah, that's actually, I should have uh, touched upon that point. It's good that people ask about it. Um, I think there are certain parts of UX design where I actually hope that AI will have a big impact. For example, patterns, design best practices, usability best practices, because the real meat of the UX design field is on understanding the human psyche. And there is no AI that can do that better than humans. So the more time that we can free up talking to people, understanding their needs, and the more time we can save by creating wireframes and all the other things that can be automated, synthesizing research insights, I think that's only positive. So um, yes, there will be parts that AI can do better at some point. We're far from that right now. Like to give you an example, um, there aren't really any AI tools that I can realistically use in my job right now because you have also privacy concerns within companies. You have data that you need to be very um, careful with that you cannot just feed into a AI design of an, an AI tool. So while I think in the future, AI will be a good partner for us, I also think that right now, I don't really see these very strong use cases where an AI will completely replace a designer. And how do you stay updated with the latest tools and and not only AI tools, but you know there are just so many tools like Figma and Sketch and other tools. How do you keep uh, up to speed with everything? I think you cannot keep up to date with every tool because there are so many out there. So what I try to do is I try to read a lot of newsletters. I can share some in the chat after this um, to kind of know what's going on in tech. I spend a lot of time, honestly, on Instagram and on LinkedIn for this to keep updated on what is happening on tech or on TikTok. You can have a lot of you have a lot of people that uh, share what is going on right now in a very digestible way, which I like. Um, but what I found is that you will get proficient with experience and a couple of tools like Figma and many tools have the same interfaces. So you can easily apply your knowledge into another tool. And 
as you progress in your career, you also notice that these tools are just that, they're just tools. But what is more important is how you work together with people, your complete skill set, not just the hard skills within a tool. So I wouldn't stress too much about, um, um, you know, learning every tool on the market because that that's like a race to the bottom. You cannot do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your permission to hang out on TikTok, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I spend way too much time on TikTok. So. I mean, it will get you a job, so why not? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's joking, though. Uh, stay, yeah, set those limits on, on your smartphones. <laughs> um, do you think uh, there's a benefit of doing freelance UX job uh, or should uh, should I focus on getting a job in the field as a full-time job? I imagine this person is asking. I think you should focus on what gets you experience. And if it's working as a freelancer, then why not work as a freelancer? Um, I wouldn't limit my, my, my options of gaining experience by just immediately dismissing becoming a freelancer. Like if that is more accessible, then why not? Great. There's another question uh, that I really like from YouTube. Um, someone's asking, if someone is over 45 years old, is it still mm -hmm. doable to become a UX designer or is it a career for young generation only? I think it's not bound to age. I think as someone that has more experience in the field, even if it's a different field, you can leverage that. You know, you have more work experience than someone that's 20 and that's now starting out. And maybe that person that's 20 is willing to work for a lower salary, or maybe they understand technology developments faster, but that doesn't mean that the experience that someone from 45 has does not weigh at all. I would more look at what are transferable skills, what are things that you already have that might make an entry into UX design easier. If you're someone that already you know had managerial positions for example that is not something that someone has that just got out of university yeah so right and um if i'm not wrong there are quite a few articles about this topic um on our blog uh, so yeah consider just searching searching for that um Considering the current job market, do junior UX designers have a better chance of finding work in big companies or smaller companies and startups? Oh, I find that hard to say if it's either the one or the other. Um, I can imagine that I think it's more about what you're looking for. Startups are oftentimes looking for designers that can do a little bit of everything, so they're generalists. And so that might be easier to land a job if you're willing to, you know, like kind of become the, the jack of all trades and kind of can manage this high velocity that comes with a startup and have the flexibility that comes with a startup. But the benefit of big companies is more specialized roles. You have more people around you that can mentor you at a startup. You might be the sole designer. That can be quite a big challenge if you're a junior. So I'm not sure what is better or where you will have a higher chance of landing a job. I think that also really depends on the region you're in and the industry you're looking for. But I would more look at it from what would these places need and does your profile fit with that? Nice. Great advice. Thank you. Um, what are your tips about networking? Uh, we have a question, well, quite a few questions actually, uh, around that topic, particularly one, how how am I supposed to land interviews without mass applying? People talk about networking, but how am I supposed to network with people without looking needy? Oh yeah, that's a really good question. I I can so relate to this, I felt the same. Um, the easiest way to build a network is if people know who you are. So you need to get visibility. How can you do that? Start posting your progress on LinkedIn, for example. I would start at LinkedIn or if you like doing TikTok, start a TikTok. If you're not in the US, otherwise it might get banned if you're started on Instagram or whatever. But you know, like 
share, do a weekly share out of what you've learned or the challenges you had or some wireframes you created. Make sure that, you know, your name is put out there because the more people that see you, the more people that recognize you and then it's easier to build a network. Go to local meetup events. You will find that a lot of people go to the same events so you can build some uh, relationships with people there. And um, connect with people on LinkedIn, but in a, a do it in a smart way. So sometimes I also get LinkedIn inv invitations from people that are completely on the different side of the world. And that to me does not make sense. But if you have people in your city that work as UX design, you know, reach out to them. Say like, hey, how, how did you get here? Make sure that if you reach out to people, don't um, like take up too much of their time. Make it easy for them to help you. So a um, mistake that a lot of people make is that they send a message and they're like, do you have 30 minutes to chat? Where no professional has 30 minutes to chat. You need to have a very concrete ask. Make it easy for people to help you out. Because a lot of people are willing to free up as much time as you need if they know what they of what they need from you yeah yeah i actually read um some tweets from Cody sanchez and she mentioned exactly that and that she really likes receiving loom videos mm -hmm. with the ask and then when she has like these two minutes you know she will watch it on two speed two times speed yeah um, and just try to try to help that person uh, yeah yeah um let me see how important is formal education or certification in UX design compared to practical experience and portfolio building? Mm -hmm. I think the practical experience is more important than a degree. And it's what I said in the beginning. UX design does not have official certifications like a, a doctor has. So you don't need like a certification just says you finished this boot camp, but it it's not a quality of a certain experience or it's not an actual degree. So I would focus more on don't break up, don't break your head over, you know, having to finish a certain degree or getting a certain certification. If you get hands-on experience, that's what will land you the job. Nice. Mm. Let's see. I also now realize that the timer on this thing is uh, not the timer on um, on on the actual time. So I thought I had more time. I thought I was oh. awake and I wasn't. You know what? It's uh, it's actually a timer of the recording, mm. which I pressed a little bit late. But don't worry, we are okay. recording it on YouTube and LinkedIn, so <laughs> okay. you're still getting the recording. It was. Yeah, my rusty memory of what to do in the in the <laughs> webinar room. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, how to differentiate myself as a junior, newly career, career changer UX designer from a competition, a more seasoned UX designer? I'm not sure if you want to if you want to compete with senior designers, because those are completely different profiles. So if you're a junior designer, it doesn't make much sense to apply to lead positions or senior mm -hmm. positions, because these are looking out for more experience. But if you want to differentiate yourself as a junior and you want to stand out of your peers, of people from equal experience, you can do that by what I said in the webinar, really bringing that focus, really focusing on what are the expertises and the interests that you have and what kind of jobs fit within that profile. So instead of um, just trying to apply to anything you see in LinkedIn, really make a selection of things where you feel like that fits my previous experience or my interests or that sounds very in like um that sounds like it fits my values that can already help you stand out because what it will do is if someone then sees your application they can understand why you're applying and a lot of people just shotgun approach their applications 
and you see them and you're thinking, why are you applying to this company? It doesn't make sense. So by focusing, you're not limiting your choices. You're actually increasing your chances. Nice. Um, are you involved at all in hiring right now at Miro? Not now, because I actually do need to do the hiring training, which I have been kind of um, avoiding. <laughs> But um, in previous companies, yes, I did this at my design studio where I worked at previously. There, um, I would be in job interviews. And one of the things that stood out to me the most is how uninterested some people are. And that also makes me think, okay, if you are, um, if, if you're just randomly ap applying to things, it will seep through in the interviews. And obviously you're not going to continue with a candidate that obviously is not interested in the role. So pick the ones that you're truly excited about because that is infectious. That will also show through in the job interviews. Nice. I love that. Um, and in regards, in regards to portfolios, um, what, what elements do companies expect to see? Mm -hmm. And there was a discussion on this uh, the other day because there are what seems like two different narratives. One narrative is focus on the storytelling uh, and the other narrative is focus on the deliverables. I would say you need to focus on both. So what is a, a good case study is showing how you arrived at a certain concept. So don't just show your the solution you came up with in the end, but show your journey to that and tell a story that relates to companies so what does that mean how did you help a certain user need how did you help save costs how did you help drive profit now of course if you are in a boot camp you're like what profit what user needs and therefore it's good to go at it from your own interests so you know like um look around things that you can actually improve so what a lot of juniors do is they redesign spotify why you know you're like a junior designer and you want to compete to a whole design team at spotify that does not make any sense but there are a lot of apps that are so bad and that no one is looking at because people don't think it's cool like spotify and you can actually have an impact with those so a really good example of this is um I have this like heating system at home called Honeywell and it has a legendarily bad app. And then I'm thinking that is something that is interesting for junior designers because that is something that you can show a true user problem. A lot of people struggle using this app, but no one is improving it because it's not cool. So, and that is one way to stand out because you're solving an actual user problem. If you're redesigning Spotify as a junior, you're not solving an actual problem. I mean, I am daily confused when I'm using my TV. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, see, these, I don't know where I am, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned um, there are some careers that um, enable you to do a lateral move to UX. Um, can you mention like what these uh, careers are? Because this person is an architect and teach, uh, they teach design uh, at the higher education level. Um, so yeah, how they're wondering how exciting these skills can be for mm -hmm. to become a UX designer. There are actually a lot of people with an architectural background working in UX. So I think architecture is a good place to start. I have colleagues that studied sociology or psychology, degrees that help you understand human needs. So that is a good, a good background to have. Um, degrees or backgrounds where you did some kind of research is good. Um, background where I think marketing is good because it in marketing, you are already thinking about how to bring a product to people and you do the same with UX design, but more based on needs and, and less based on sales, I guess. So I think in many different jobs, you can find things that are of benefit in UX. Think about research, think about moments where you helped identify the needs from the from your customers or your users, 
um, graphic design, obviously, for the visual design part. So it's hard to give like a definite list. But yeah, look at like where where did you where did you have moments where you did research? Where did you have moments where you looked into the human psyche? Where you looked into delivering on people's needs? Um, the visual design part, a lot of people studied interaction design or digital media or something like that. So, yeah, a bit from, yeah, you can find it in many different, like I said, I studied art history, which has really nothing to do with design, and even that helps me a lot. But what's, I mean, maybe you can mention that, but like, I think what's interesting, you actually don't need design experience to become a UX designer, right? Exactly. Exactly. You don't need design experience. You, I think it is of benefit if you have affinity with design. Like if you say, I have never in my life opened a design tool and I also don't want to, then of course it's going to be difficult. So um, even though I studied art history, I was always very interested in design. I built my own websites. I learned myself Photoshop and that definitely helped me. So if you have an interest and an affinity with design that will be of benefit, but that doesn't mean you need to have work experience in design or a degree in design. Yeah. Uh, speaking speaking of skills, uh, another question from YouTube, and I'm yeah quite aware of uh, your time, Maureen. I know you want to go home, so that's probably the last question we're going to ask. We have, we have time. <laughs> I know there's always many questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what hard skills are key? For junior designers to improve consistently and what skills are completely unnecessary for junior ux ui designers when we're talking about hard skills the first thing i would focus on as a junior designer is becoming proficient in figma understanding how you can use auto layout for example understanding how you can build components understanding the basics of prototyping so um, feeling comfortable in using figma that will save you a lot of time later down the line, because um, even when you're a UX designer and not necessarily a UI designer, you will still be working in design tools. So I think Figma is a great place to start when it comes to, uh, to other um, hard skills outside of visual design. I would definitely look into um, journey mapping and mapping how users get from A to B. And obviously working at Miro, I use Miro for this, but I already did that before I worked at Miro. Um, learning how to identify what are the different steps that people have to take to finish a certain goal and where do they undertake these steps and what do they need to succeed. So learning a design tool like Figma Learning customer journey mapping is great. Learning how to present is great. But what's even more important than the hard skills to come back to what is not necessary as a, as a junior, what is even more important is learning the soft skills. So learning things like how do you communicate um, design decisions? How can you convince people? How can you um, ask questions, like good um questions and interviews that dig deeper how can you ask questions that are not leading um how can you i don't know like help collaboration within your team these are all things that of course are really hard to learn as someone that is not working in a company but you can do these things for example with working together with someone on a personal project. That is also collaboration. That is also managing expectations from different people. So I would focus um, on the hard skills because they're important, but definitely not neglect soft skills like communication, um, collaboration, that kind of thing. Amazing. Um, I know quite a few people wanted to connect with you on LinkedIn. So Maureen, can you drop Yeah. the the link um if i know that out of my head <laughs> <laughs> i have to check what that linkedin link is um yeah and yeah thank you again for for sharing your story uh with us today uh, and those great insights i hope everyone got a ton of value out of this and hopefully feels excited about actually the idea of a career in ux design yeah um yeah, if you're interested uh, in 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 that, 
Uh, as I mentioned, you can get 20% off using this special link that I'm just dropping in the chat right here. This is a special uh, Maureen link. Um, <laughs> um, but if you're interested in any other Curve Foundry program, um, you can get up to 1,500 euros or dollars off, uh, dollars, sorry, um, with other programs uh, during the month of March with our Women in Tech scholarship. Um, and to get that, you just need to schedule it. And I know we haven't mentioned, uh, we haven't answered uh, quite a few questions today. Um, so yeah, again, uh, schedule a call with one of our program advisors and they will be able to um, assist you with with that. Um, okay, that's a wrap. Uh, so thank you for hanging out with us again mm -hmm. um, and have a, have a fantastic day. Uh, lovely to have you, Maureen. Let's, um, yeah, you're actually hosting another one tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so for people who are not tired of me speaking, yeah. Yeah, you can join tomorrow. We'll talk about women in tech. There are a few really cool women joining, and I'm really excited for more women in UX. We definitely need more women in tech. So you uh, if you are identifying as a woman and you want to work in this field, join tomorrow. I think that Another will be one. a very inspiring panel. Yeah, thank you, Maureen. Uh, so yeah, details uh, for that event is on our website, carefoundry.com forward slash events. <laughs> um, yeah, hope to see you on the next webinar. Um, and bye for now. Yes, bye-bye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Bye, Maureen. How do I, oh no. How do I stop this? <laughs> Wait. And webinar. Okay. Goodbye.